And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Yukon Airways. This is a game in which you're a pilot taking passengers up in the Yukon area. You, you go pick them up, and you take them where they need to go. So a, what we often call pickup and delivery game. In this case, the passengers are dice. Well, not really. The dice are just representing passengers, and they're just wanting to go sightseeing and things like that. And you want to be efficient because fuel's expensive. You only got so much fuel to deal with, and you will just want to get, make the most money by the time the game's over. Here's how it plays. At, the game is going to take place over six rounds. Everyone rests on Monday, so there's nothing going on on Monday in the course of the game. You're going to have a bunch of cubes. Everyone's going to start here in White Horse. That's the, where your planes are going to begin. You have these dice that are rolled initially and placed here on the board on the number that's been rolled. These dice are different passengers. These passengers will go anywhere, but they particularly like to go to a spot where there is a cube of their color. So in each round, players are going to go in turn order up here, and they're going to pick one of these spots here. When they go there, they're going to get the action of that spot, which is optional. You don't have to take it. So for example here, you get two oil. Um, if you go here, you can pay a dollar to turn on one of your switches, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later. Then a player can take one or more passengers of the same color. So here I could take both of the pink. Here I could take just the green. You can pay money, money's points, so keep that in mind, to move someone from an adjacent one before you take passengers. The number doesn't matter once you take them. Regardless of what you do, you're then going to put the passengers on your plane. So let's say I take these two blue passengers and put them here. You then are going to get fuel. The fuel is going to equal to the number of open spots that you have, plus where you are on your bonus fuel dial. So if I'm at one here on my bonus fuel dial, and I had those two leftover spots, then I would get three fuel. And you can have a maximum of seven fuel per turn. Each player has their own board here, and these are useful for a couple things. As you deliver passengers, you'll put cubes on the board, and at the end of the game, you're going to get bonus money for the number of different areas that you've dropped off passengers. You also have these dials here. This one here keeps track of your fuel, but through various ways, one of the actions as I just showed you, or delivering passengers to a spot where they want to go, you're going to be able to unlock more things. When you unlock things, you'll be able to move these dials. So for example, this dial here tells you how many cards you're allowed to have in your hand at the end of a turn. This one tells you how many cards you'll draw. Both of these can be moved up. I can have up to six cards and draw up to five each turn. This dial doesn't do anything for you, but is bonus money at the end of the game. It's the Christmas bonus. This one lets you discard cards for fuel, and this one gives you bonus fuel each turn. Instead of moving up a dial whenever you get a bonus, you can also turn these switches on here. And each of these switches is going to do various things for you, like being able to move passengers for free, or being able to play two cards to get a bonus instead of three. And so players are not going to be able to do all of these over the course of the game. They have to decide to do which ones they think will help them most. In turn order, players are now going to fly. When you want to fly to a spot, you need to have enough fuel to get there, and you'll need to play a card for each uh, passenger you want to take there. So if I want to fly one person to Dawson City, I'm going to need one, three, four fuel to get there, and I'll need to play this Dawson City card. And it shows that it's four. The, the number here always tells you the complete number of fuel or the fastest way to get there from Whitehorse. Um, if I want to deliver two passengers, I would have to play two Dawson City cards if I'm going to drop off two passengers. And you can always spend any three cards to go anywhere. Now, when you drop off the passenger, if you, uh, they are matching the color cube in that city, you'll take the color cube uh, from the city, which is going to give you a bonus in that area. Um, you can move up one of your dials or take one of the bonus actions. Otherwise, you'll just take a generic gray cube, uh, which is, you know, could be useful. There's also some bonus cards at the bottom of the board. Sometimes, depending on if you deliver certain color passengers, you'll get bonuses. There's also this one here, which if you have leftover fuel, you'll get a bonus. And the bonus cards can change from game to game.
Cards have symbols in the top corner. You can see that there's either a dollar sign or there's a fuel sign or there's a wrench sign. And when you play one to go to that city, if you play two more extra cards, just discarding those, you'll get the bonus. Although you can upgrade that later to only have to do two cards to get the bonus. And so if you play three dollar signs, you'll get three dollars. Easy to remember. Three fuel cards gives you two fuel. Not as easy. Okay. Anyway. And three wrenches will let you upgrade one of your dials or special abilities. So you, you are using all the cards in your hand often for various things to get bonuses and to fly people. Once everyone has gone around the table and dropped off a passenger, you can go again. If you still have fuel, you can fly from the city you're at and maybe drop off somebody in another city. At the end of a round, all the passengers, whether delivered or not, are going to be re-rolled and put over here. And then all the airplanes are going to come back to Whitehorse. Players are also going to get money based on the highest city where they've stopped a passenger, plus one more for every passenger that they've dropped off. With the exception, you'll notice here at the very top, the cities that are far away, you'll get bonus money for dropping the people off there. Players will then draw cards and discard down to their hand size based on where their dials are and start the next round. Uh, depending on where you went over here, the person who picked passengers up from number one will be first next round, second, third, fourth, because there's no special ability here in the first spot and you would only go there maybe because you want the color passengers, but if you want, there's no special ability, but you'll get to go first next time. While if you go down here, you might get better special abilities, but you'll probably go last in the following round. After all six rounds are over, players are going to total their scores. They're going to be looking at the bonuses for the number of places they deliver to, plus the money that they've gotten over the course of the game, and plus the Christmas dial that might give you some extra money, and whoever has the most money is the winner. This board itself is cool looking and works well, but is also my one problem with components. Well, that and one of my planes broke. <laughs> um, first of all, these dials are a real pain to put together. Happily, they give you extra pieces to put in there, so that's fine, but they just weren't easy dials to build. And then I hate these switches. I really do. These pieces themselves are really tiny and small, and I if I hadn't been blinking, I may have thrown them away because they don't look like they're pieces you would keep for a game. I am personally going to be replacing them with black cubes, which don't fit in as perfectly well, but they're just a little easier to move and to see and to not lose, in my opinion. Uh, the rest of the components for the game are fine. There's different colors, which again, if you are colorblind, that could be a problem because there's green and red. But I found the symbology of the game to be pretty good. You know, it's historically nice to see all those different cities there. And the cards themselves are essentially... They give you the name of the city, they remind you if there's the bonus for things, and that, and they show you where on the map it is. That's it. It's not a lot of information. These cards, the bonus cards, you'll have to look them up probably to see what they are, but there's only three per game, so that's not a big deal. You just say, hey, these are the ones we're playing with, this is what it does, and then everyone remembers. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the components. I find this to be a pleasantly themed game. It's a nice game. It's, it's unique. There's a lot of pickup and delivery games, but this one, picking up the passengers and taking them to these different cities, I, I like it. it. It's an enjoyable theme, and even though the passengers are dice, the rest of it works. I mean, it doesn't hurt to have this little board in front of you with dials and things like, oh, I'm fine, an airplane. The game itself is pretty basic. You're drawing cards, looking at those cards, figuring, where am I going to go? What bonuses do I want? Where am I going to drop off the passengers and that's okay I think I would just say the game was okay for that even with the drafting of the dice which I like with the special abilities like one lets you take two different colored dice and one gives you extra fuel but where the game shines and what makes it interesting is these dial slash switches so there's one two three four five six seven switches and then the dials have a total of Let's see, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 things. So 19 plus 7, 26 upgrades. You're not going to get 26 upgrades over the course of a game. And I 
tried, right? Like my first game, the very first thing I did was I took the thing that said I only needed to use two bonus cards to get an upgrade. And then I delivered dice and did upgrades and I upgraded several things, but you can't upgrade them all. So you have to figure out what's the best way to do. You can only have seven fuel, so you can't even get to the last spot that needs 10 fuel to get there unless you play bonus cards that give you extra fuel to get there and or you move up your discarded card to get oil. Um, so is that what you want to try to do? Or maybe you just put all your stuff in the Christmas bonus and take the Christmas bonus at the end. That's points. And down here, which special abilities do I want? Do I want to be able to only use two cards to go to a wild location of my choice? And I, and I feel like that that this, those decisions make the game fun. Each game you come in, and there's a variant where you can play where your plane already starts with like a special thing already. But the whole fuel economy system, you, the, I, I mentioned at the beginning, like, hey, you know, fuel's expensive. But at least you don't pay for fuel. In this game, money is essentially victory points. Yes, you spend it a few times, maybe to upgrade an ability to move a die to a spot. But at the end of the day, you're just getting money, and you don't need to sit there and say, okay, I'm spending five for fuel. No, you just get a certain amount of fuel per turn. But the cards, you, so I, I need more cards. I'm not getting enough cards. So which dials do you move up? And I find that to be fascinating. It's the most interesting part of the game, and it elevates it from being just a eh, pick up and deliver game to being a much more interesting one. That, when combined with the theme, makes Yukon Airways a game that I recommend. I think it's it's a fun one. It feels different than other things that are out there, and it gives you a lot of options. And you'll probably be trying different combinations from game to game. It's also fairly light. We're talking an hour, maybe a little bit less if you play pretty quick. And it just seems to hit a nice sweet spot. So check it out, Yukon Airways. Dice Tower Judgment approved.